everyone, this is Wanda Alger, and you are watching this video on Tuesday, November 21st. However, as you are watching this, Bobby and I are on a 10-day Caribbean cruise, a very long-awaited uh, dream of ours. We finally get to check it off of our bucket list. But before I left, I recorded an amazing interview with Andrew Whalen. For some of you who have been following Elijah's Dreams, uh, you know who Andrew is. For those who don't, you'll get to meet him in this interview where we talk about a lot of different things, all of which I know are going to really encourage you. So I've been holding this interview to release now. So I hope that you enjoy this very special conversation with Andrew Whalen. I think the cool thing about um, what you have been sharing on Elijah's Dreams lately, though, is you know a lot of the stuff that you're sharing it's not like you're doing the research and you've got these theories that you want to prove out. And so you're digging deep and watching the news. Not it's purely what the Lord is showing you in dreams. And yep. I think that that's what people really need to hear that God is paying attention to these things. It's, it's not our idea to go after this. These are things God has been revealing. I mean, mm -hmm. that's when I was, you know, on Elijah's dreams a lot in 2021, 2022, it was because of the dreams that I had about JFK, about, you know, these underground things that were happening. You know, it, it was things that the, the spirit had to show me. Um, otherwise, I wouldn't have never thought about it on my own. So I think that's, I mean, because you've been sharing dreams from, goodness, years ago that you've had. Yeah. I mean, the majority, have you shared a lot of those dreams before? Not probably in in an open context or, you know, more of a, not in a public setting, but, you know, from, from those that are kind of around me, you know, I've shared some of those things, but, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's definitely, I, I'm actually really encouraged to be able to, um, to be able to share these now because I've, for years, um, when I would get these dreams, kind of like you, I, I went through a lot of warfare, like, in just different kinds of warfare and part of my my cry during that time was lord let this mean something let the warfare the suffering the struggles let it you know and even these dreams that you're given to me don't let it just go to waste let this be something that can be a ministry that can really do damage to darkness and help the body of christ and so now I'm really, I'm very encouraged that I'm able just to share that mm -hmm. uh, because honestly, a lot of these, this revelation to me, it it's more meaningful than just, oh, it's, it, it's a gift. It was a, uh, a Holy Spirit gift. It was in, it came during seasons of man, intense warfare trial. Mm -hmm. And so some of that, it means a lot that I get to now release it so yeah. it's encouraging yeah well you know that's one of the first things that stood out to me when i first saw you on facebook you know a couple of years ago was as you were sharing these dreams it was so similar to my my journey because i started having dreams you know 15 years ago about national things and you know the presidents and i was like i'm just you know a worship leader in our local church raising my kids and um but you write them down you know, mm -hmm. and you keep track and you pray into them and, you know, there comes a point where, okay, now it's time to release them. Now they have context, which I think is such an important reminder, you know, for those who are watching that so many times when God does speak to us, it's very rarely immediate, <laughs> yeah. you know, he's, he's always preparing us. I mean, that's the majority of dreams that I've gotten. It's always in preparation for things. And he gives us plenty of time to prepare, yeah. um, he doesn't give us a last minute. Oh, by the way, you better be ready for this. It's coming tomorrow. <laughs> and yet that's, that's kind of the knee jerk that we've gotten used to is expecting that. Um, so I'm, I'm just interested now that you have shared, you know, the, a lot on Elijah's dreams. These are dreams that you had years ago. What, what has been the response uh, from people or, or have you seen many of the things come to pass that has bolstered your confidence? Yeah, you know, I think I think one of the great encouragements for me is, you know, when you have a dream and you've maybe carried it in your, you know, you've written it down like 10 years ago and you're like, well, I guess that's over. I guess that didn't mean much. But now <laughs> you're now you're bringing it back out. And it's kind of mm -hmm. like for people, this is like hot off the press. This is something that's like 
a preceding word for them. And it's, and it's, um, and you see the power of the prophetic in action because people are like, uh, it, it's like God blows on it and, and mm -hmm. it's reviving things. And that's part of what is exciting to me. It's like, oh, these, that's why I so love dreams because I see how it can, um, it's almost like what Ezekiel, what the Lord told Ezekiel or asked him, can these dry bones live? And then he tells him to prophesy uh, the breath of God over them. And that's what I see. Like these dreams are like breath over dry bones and they become like these uh, the prophetic wind of God to start to revive and, and build mm -hmm. people up. So it's been super encouraging to, to hear that, to get feedback. I get a lot of feedback and people are saying, Hey, I love this dream that you shared. This has helped me in my own life, or this has helped me know how to pray, or, you know, it's given me so much hope. And so I love that. That's so encouraging to me. And, and it makes me realize like, and I said this, uh, I was writing in my journal the other day and um, the Lord said, there's no, there's no expiration date to my dreams unless I say so. Oh. So, so I thought that well, that's cool. All right, God, there's so, and you know, it's interesting, but honey also doesn't have an expiration date. And the scripture uh, talks about my word is like honey. Oh, and, wow. uh, you know, I really feel like God was connecting something and saying, you know, unless I say this word is done or mm -hmm. or it's been fulfilled or whatever um and it's no longer pertinent this thing doesn't have an expiration date and wow. that's that's encouraging to me is you know yeah. and obviously i know there's specific real specific pointed words about time sensitive things that yeah you know but in general i mm -hmm. do believe god's saying don't let what i give you out of the realm of the spirit that's by my word don't let it don't let it pass away. Don't let it die. You mm -hmm. know, dust off, dust off your prayer journals, dust off mm -hmm. your dream journals, mm -hmm. go, go meditate on what I've shared on prophecies I've given. And so yeah. anyway, I don't know if you asked for all that, but that's, no, that's, that's good. That's good. So here, here's a, an interesting question. And it, it is a leading question into a, a bigger topic. Because some, some of the things that I've heard as you've shared on Elijah's stream, some of the dreams that you had, um, and I'm, I don't have dates or when they lined up, but really seem to, um, confirm what's happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Uh, some of these conspiracy theories or, you know, the idea of, you know, the military's part in this president Trump's role during this current time, obviously you, as I said earlier, you didn't pursue this kind of information. And some of this seems to have come a while ago. Mm -hmm. Um, but yet yeah, you have come from, uh, your, your field has really been prophetic intercession. Yep. And so the, these two can, could conflict in, in some people's minds of those in, in the body of Christ who are focusing just on prayer, praying for everyone, you know, and asking for revival to come and focusing on the, the gospel and then you've got this camp that are looking into what's happening behind the scenes. What does this really mean? But you somehow kind of brought these two together, if that makes sense. I mean, how how have you processed all that? Wow, that's great. It, you know, it's really interesting you're, you're asking that because I've actually literally within the past few days have actually been processing that very <laughs> idea. Yeah. Um, in fact, I just had a phone call with Johnny Inlow, like, I don't know if it was yesterday or two days ago, and he was confirming this exact thing. Mm. And he said, Andrew, you know, I feel like you're going to be um, really significant to the prayer movement in, in this new day or new generation or whatever. And he said, you, because of your, you have the, the narrative understanding of what is taking place a lot uh, behind the scenes and, and those kinds of things. And which to me, that's early on. So when I say early on, I mean like in maybe the early 2000s when I was getting lit on fire for prayer and intercession and, and these kinds of things, God also started to merge dreams in that had to do with like these conspiracies. And, um, and I wasn't hearing anybody else talk about that anywhere. 
And so I bring it up to some different, maybe spiritual leaders and stuff. And they kind of just looked at me cross-eyed like what? (laughs) (laughs) But along the way, God just continued to confirm and confirm and confirm. And, and so I kind of had to, in my own, uh, walk with the Lord, understand that there would be a time and a season that he, he would use this, Mm. these kinds of, uh, understandings and revelation. And I think it's now coming forth, you know, we're seeing a time now where I think the body of Christ, we have to, if we're really going to be effective in true, in prophetic intercession on the current battlefield, spiritual Mm. battlefield, we mm-hmm. are going to have to be those who are willing to let the Lord show us what he needs to show us mm-hmm. and look at what he uncovers, um, which reminds me of a dream where I remember in, in this dream, this was about 2000, um, maybe around, maybe around 2020, maybe 2019, but I had a dream where I was walking down a path. And, and I was walking with another prophet and we got to a T in the road and like a T intersection and you could either go left or right. And I knew, I knew by revelation that if, if the prophetic went left, it would be those who are, are willing just to uh, kind of focus on the things of the prophetic or uh, revival and, and signs and wonders and miracles and and that's great but i knew in the dream if if the prophet uh the prophetic went to the right it would mean that you would also be willing to allow the lord to show you everything behind the scenes all the evil all the works of the enemy everything that's going the conspiracies of of evil and uh men and all that and i and i made a statement in that dream and i said the prophets that go left are not in sin, but I said the prophets that go right will receive the greatest spoils of war. Mm. And that's kind of what I feel. I feel like God's given gave that as a um, I don't know what you a template to say, hey, if you want to just go left and focus on that, you know, that's okay. But if you are allow me to show you what is happening, if you really allow you know it's not comfortable because it's it's not politically correct often but if you allow me to show you what's what for those who see it and and you really begin to pray into it you'll get the greatest spoils of war mm-hmm. um, so i don't know if that makes sense no it does actually you, you'd shared that before and it, but it's such a a good way of describing the challenge and i appreciate the way you know, you clarify, it's not a sin. It's not, I mean, it is a choice. God does give us a choice. And I mean, he's not going to shun us when we really want to serve him. And obviously I want to support anyone that is contending for revival, that's spending yeah. time in prayer and fasting. I mean, that that's good. But yet, uh, if we don't have a proper understanding of the landscape, it's like, you, you got to know your battlefield. You have to know where everyone is at, what, what, the big picture is to be effective. And so to me, that's where they, they meet as well. Um, You know, there's a certain, go ahead. Sorry. It just had a thought to respond to your, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I just had a thought when you were about, you asked about the um, kind of this whole idea about the conspiracy stuff going on behind the scenes. And then the main thrust of what has been the intercession prayer movement, I remember early in the 2000s that I had a dream with Lou Engle. And Lou Engle, for those that don't know, he's been a, a great friend and spiritual father to me. And, um, and so I remember having this dream where I walk up to Lou and I say, Lou, I said, um, I, you and I, if you're willing to walk with me in this, we're called to take down the Illuminati. And... Um, and in the dream, he looked at me and kind of laughed and said, I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> and um, wow, which, which is funny. I've mentioned this dream to Lou and he kind of has that same response. Like, man, I don't know about that world. Like, I don't even get that. And and so wow. that's been kind of like I've 
I've just understood, even God was showing me early on that, hey, you know, Lou, I, I've called Lou, he's got an assignment, he's got this, and, and Lou to me could represent maybe a, a good portion of that prophetic prayer movement, prophetic intercession, and they're on assignment, um, but not all of them are going to know uh, this this realm that I'm showing you, Andrew. So yeah. I, I've had to understand that, like not everybody's going to get it, Not a, they're not going to all feel called to it. Right. But I do believe that I'm supposed to bring these two kind of dimensions together and say, it's time yes. to start seeing what's actually going on and bring the realm of prophetic intercession into it. Amen. Yes. Well, and this is, let's, let's take this a step further because, uh, you know, I just, I released uh, my latest word, which I, I know you read coming out of this last weekend with IFA's 50th anniversary and Eric Metaxas was there speaking and really saying, we've got one more year, folks, you know, with the 2024 election around the corner, you know, how are we going to come together? And I knew the Lord was, was speaking to my heart. How are we going to use this next year to really have one voice? You know, you've been talking a lot about the lion's roar mm -hmm. and the unity and the spirit is not one of just acquiescing to someone else's opinion or trying to find a middle road. The oneness of spirit is being of one mind with that. That means understanding things, you know, being intelligent, having spiritual intelligence about what, what all is happening. And these realms do have to come together. And, and I think that is the question that we have to be willing to ask is how are we going to do that? Because as you and I were talking earlier, even in the prophetic, there's little camps, you know, yeah. there's, there's the glory days and the gloomy days. I mean, that's kind of, <laughs> you know, general as a generalized statement, but those are terms that have been thrown around, you know, that there are the prophets that the peace that, and, and I feel like I'm one of them, the pieces that the Lord has given me have been more of all that he's doing within the church, sanctifying, purifying, bringing us into the days when the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is going to fill the earth. Mm -hmm. I have not gotten the kinds of dreams where cities are burning and the antichrist, you know, is, is emerging. That's not a piece that I've gotten. And yet, there are, you know, those who are receiving warning dreams and specific, you know, of praying for certain cities and, and seeing things that we have to pray into calling us to prayer and fasting. And I'm like, they're both true. They're both valid, yeah. but yeah. they're pieces. They're all pieces. And yet we, we can so easily demonize one another because, well, you're not saying what I'm saying. I don't think we're supposed to. I think yeah. what we're supposed to be doing is what we're doing, collaborating, you know? Yes. So what piece did the Lord give you? I mean, I saw a beautiful example of this the other day. It was, it was a couple of weeks ago. Someone on Facebook who, who is a prophet in their nation, the name doesn't matter, but they were sharing that they had released a prophetic word and they found out that another respected prophet in their nation had released a word around the same time that sounded like they conflicted. And so this person was saying they called that person because they were in relationship and they prayed and processed together and adjusted things to where they could both come out and say, you know what? The Lord was speaking to both of us and this is what it means. Mm. Now, wow, isn't that a novel idea? You know, wow. rather than saying, oh, well, they're a false prophet because they didn't get what I got. Well, maybe if we just kind of process a little bit more, because a lot of it I think is in the interpretation. It, you know, it, even way back to the Trump prophecies about the election, because you do a lot of dream interpretation teaching, just like I do. You know, there's the revelation, the interpretation, and the application. Yep. I will never back down on the revelation that God has given me about Trump, the election, this country. Hmm. Where we've missed it is the application. Yes. And even somewhat in the, in the interpretation. Right. But that does not make you a false prophet. I mean, it makes no. you, okay, we're on a learning curve. Yep. But that application sometimes can only come, I think, when we do collaborate and, and we broaden our scope a little bit more to understand what else is God saying? So I don't know. What are your thoughts? That's really good. I really, I really truly believe that's accurate. Like we need the full, I don't know if you want to call it the full counsel of the Lord. Yeah. And, um, and I do think that we hurt ourselves when we aren't willing to hear and listen. We ought to be those who are slow to speak, you know, quick to listen, slow to get angry. Let's just, mm -hmm. let's listen and wait. And, um, and I think, I think sometimes when you're a known prophet or a known leader or a known voice, maybe, I don't know if you put pressure on yourself or you feel like you have this expectation that I've got to give a voice to everything. 
I think sometimes when you do that, mm -hmm. you actually, you're, um, I think you sometimes are making over generalizations, you're missing things, you're, you're kind of, it's kind of the run, the running of, I forgot who it was that, uh, when he ran to the king and he only had half of the message, um, mm -hmm. or he only had part of the message and we're running sometimes before we have the full word on it, we've, before we have the full counsel. And I think that there is a real benefit to just hearing and, and being willing. I'm, this is one thing I try to do, not to say I do it perfectly, but I try to listen for Christ in everybody and you know all right christ where am i hearing where am i hearing your voice where am i seeing you and discerning you and and really taking that all into account mm -hmm. um and so yes i think we can fall into error when we are not willing to let let the broader uh dimension of the body of christ have mm -hmm. voice because there's so much that we can glean and hear so i don't know if that helps a little bit that's kind yeah. of what i'm well, that's good. So let, let me ask this, you know, because in, in the word that I released, I felt like the Lord, it was a real challenge to 2024 because I, 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 I compared it to almost like give, being given a death sentence from a doctor. You've got one year to live. Yep. And so you have to decide, how am I going to live it? And I mean, obviously, I know you and I, we both have faith. God's going to save this nation. He's going to have his way. But he uses you and I. And, and we have a part in this. And so what should our priority be then if, if this is a real issue of us coming together and having one voice? Um, what is that focus then? I mean, yes, we know worship because this is I've gone back. I've gotten back involved in in worship ministry because God called me there. That was my original ministry was as a worship leader. That's going to be a key part of what God does now. And when the glory comes, it's going to be through mm -hmm. worship. Wow. But it also has to be through action in the city square you know, locally, how do we reach, you know, the broader body of Christ, those who still don't get it, and especially those under 40, who are yeah. turned off by politics, mm -hmm. we don't want to talk about anything like this. How do we reach them? How, how have you w watched, you know, those in the younger set, you know, what's going to reach them to help them get on board? Well, <clears throat> that's really good, Wanda. Um, and I'm not sure I have all the answers to that. But one thing that I feel um, maybe the one small piece I might have from the Lord on it is that um, it, it, it goes back to um, a season in when I was in Texas and I was working out at the gym one day. And I was, uh, I was on the bench press and I was lifting and all of a sudden I'm, you know, I'm not just, I wasn't thinking about anything except I need to get this weight off of my chest. <laughs> and as I'm there working out, I hear the voice of the Lord say, if you want to see awakening come to a generation, uh, preach on the rise and fall of civilization or, uh, rise and fall of civilizations. Ah, and I said, did I just hear you say that, Lord? I, I know, I know I just heard it. Was that you, Lord? And so I, I leave the gym and I go immediately from the gym, you know, I'm still pondering this word and I'm going to the coffee shop. And as I'm waiting in line, I happen to look over to the, there's a guy sitting at a table in the coffee shop and he's got a stack of books. And on the very top book, it says rise and fall of civilizations. And I'm thinking, what in the world? So I go up to this guy and I say, hey, um, I said, why do you have this book? He said, um, he said, well, actually, um, I'm doing I'm researching if the, to see if there's a connection between the moral and spiritual state of a uh, of a people or a civilization and its rise and fall. And I said, oh, my goodness, man. I said, are you a Christian? And he goes, no. And I and at that point, the Holy Spirit said, the rocks are going to start crying out. In other words, I knew God was saying, see, even the world recognizes where we have come to a breaking point. We have come to the place where either we will have a massive fall, a massive collapse of civilization, or we'll, or we will rise. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And I feel like God was saying, Andrew, this is the word that can bring awakening to a generation. If we understand what time it is, what time it is right now is it is an extremely late hour. And by late hour, I don't mean that necessarily that the Lord is returning any moment. I mean, like America, it's a late hour for America. And yeah. if, and I feel like God is saying, if the generation can start to see that their, their pursuit after all of their dreams or all of their hopes are literally are at the brink of collapse because of where the state of the nation is, there might be an awakening to a young generation that says, we're going to rise up and help you know, contend and believe for a massive revival, a massive awakening, reformation, all of that. So that is part of what I feel. The other thing is, um, I've, I've been writing a book and I, I'm, I'm actually calling, and I'm, this isn't just to plug my book, but. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you have permission. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm calling it dreams to save a nation. And in in part of the forward or the part of my introduction of the book, I basically say, hey, I'm talking about controversial subject matter that very possible, not not everybody's going to agree with. Some are going to think it's political, blah, 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 blah. And I basically say, hey, because of where we're at as a nation, what is required is all hands on deck. We cannot be those right now who are straining out a gnat and swallowing a camel um, literally what is needed in this time is to find every means possible to unify for the salvation of a nation. We need to see that God comes and saves America. Yeah. Um, and so that is, that's my main thrust is I want to, I want to help awaken a young generation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, every generation, but yeah. especially the younger one to let them know right. we are at an urgent moment and and all of your hopes and dreams for whatever you, got, you know you want to do, it's it's at risk right now. The future yeah. of our children, the future of everything. So yeah, yeah, and yeah. You know what I think of because the the majority of um, I mean, let's face even at the uh, IFA's fiftieth anniversary, the majority of attendees are over fifty. Uh, there's a lot of motivation for parents and grandparents because you see your children. I mean, that's really the motivation behind yeah. a lot of the intercession. It's for our children. Right. But what if, you know, we're talking about the twenties, those who don't have kids, those who don't have families. And unfortunately, you know, the, the millennials and twenties um, and thirties who have been raised in a totally different yeah. <laughs> culture than, you know, what I grew up in yes. um, what's their motivation you know, and there's some challenges. I mean, these are points for prayer, obviously, because I know with our young adults, it's a totally different conversation. Yeah. You know, and you hit on it, the rise and fall of civilization. They're they're given to philosophy, you know, yeah. they intellect, they want to understand things. We can meet them on that, on, on that page. Let's talk about it. But mm. you know, that means that we have to know the word. We yeah. have to be armed ourselves then. Uh, and that's where I think a lot of Christians, unfortunately, are still illiterate mm -hmm. concerning a biblical worldview. What does that even mean? Because that that doesn't come by default. Right. Uh, in this day and age, our kids have been raised on the Internet. And so the biblical worldview is definitely a risk. Uh, if it's not already fallen in many places in the church. So that's a huge area, you know, to be praying into. And the other one that that I see is the church speaking into government because yes. this too is a huge roadblock for many pastors. You know, my husband's a pastor. Um, how does that work? And you know, that's where my book moving from sword to scepter. I, I, I knew that's why I had to write it was what is, what does the Bible say about our voice in our culture and into the government? And I say government, not politics, but into the government yeah. um, because these things have to stick you know, whatever we're doing, that this is the reality of the hour, the, the season, the era. Yep. It's so huge. We're talking about rebuilding yes. something that's been eroded for decades and generations. So, yep. you know, these are long-term, long-term goals, 
you know, that, that we have to be dealing with. So for you, you know, as we're talking about this, Andrew, what, what do you see, you know, what has the Lord really called you to speak into 2024? What, where is your passion? What's that one message that you feel? I mean, maybe you've already said it in terms of reaching the next generation, but, but even for people that are trying to get a handle on, okay, you know, what can I do? What can I rally behind? What, what yeah. are you Well, I, there's a, there's a lot on my heart. Um, I would say this, I would say, um, for me personally, I don't push, I don't put much stock in the elections for 2024. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to tell people not to vote. That's, that's not going to be what I'm, are are you saying you're not sure if they're going to happen or you're, you're not sure. Obviously they're not going to be fair with the current administration. We know that. Yeah. I would say, you know, if, if things are as they've been, then I'd say, what is the point of our, our election? They're, they're completely been uh, taken over. And I think if, if you are, I think if people are still blind to see that right now, then you're, you're still asleep. (laughs) That's my, Mm -hmm. that's my conjecture is you're, you know, you're asleep right now. If you think that we have very fair and safe elections right now, uh, with everything that has come to light, um, mm. you, you're pretty much just wearing a blindfold. Is my strong point of view on it? But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I share that point of view, so you're not alone. <gasps> yeah, and but the thing is, I'm not my my. Uh, I don't feel like my at least at this point, I don't feel like my call is to go trumpet the fact that I believe the elections are, you know, whacked and all that. Mm -hmm. But what I do believe is that a lot, you know, from all the intel, I think our prayers have to be focused on, yes, number one, God, we want your will. We want everything you have, you have ordained for our nation for this year. We, that's what we want. We long for, but I'm saying, God, all the prophetic words and dreams about president Trump to me are still on a green light. It God's saying, I'm not done with this. I'm not done with him. His scroll hasn't been completed. Right. Uh, the Cyrus calling hasn't even come forth into its fullness. Every dream. I mean, I don't have time to go into all my dreams, but I've got dream after dream about president Trump. And at this point I'm like, well, that's where i have that's the Hill at this point. I don't want to say I'm willing to die on. I know it's not about a man saving, right. You know what I mean? But But in one sense, it's about, well, if God has appointed that man, if God has raised that man up, then yes, I'm going to fight for it with all my heart Um, because there's a purpose. There's an eternal kingdom purpose there. Mm -hmm. And I believe that with everything Trump has stood for, uh, spoken for, promised what he would do, um, I would say then our nation is in a desperate place to get him in position again. Mm -hmm. And, um, I do believe one of the greatest needs for this generation. When I say this generation, I guess I just mean all of those presently living in this earth and, you know, specifically this generation in America right now, we are in desperate need of the fear of the Lord. Mm. There's no fear of God. And that's why evil has run rampant that's why sin has run that's why honestly that's why the church to be honest is so watered down and lukewarm is there's not a real fear of the lord and i don't i actually have felt the lord say that the fear of the lord will not return until evil is openly um judged until we actually see workers Mm. of evil and iniquity actually uh pay with uh, for the crimes that they've committed. And when that begins to happen in a public national level, we will start to see the entrance of the fear of the Lord return. And yeah. so, um, okay. So can I, I'm going to interrupt you now. <laughs> yes, go ahead. <laughs> because I had a dream uh, that signaled that over a year ago and I've already shared it, but Bobby and I were brought into a courtroom blindfolded and we knew that um, judgment was being executed on leaders for where they stood. And we heard two people drop and we knew they had chosen wrong and the blindfolds were taken off. 
and it was Obama and Hillary. And in the dream, I heard your eyes will see what your ears have heard. And I knew that it was an indication of the judgment that was going to be seen. We only heard it. Our eyes were blindfolded. We couldn't see it, but we just knew in the spirit, God's justice is going to be served. Now, what that looks like, have no idea. But I knew at that point, God, God was saying very clearly, because the, the dream then went on where we went out. And I mean, everyone was a buzz because of what was happening, because now we were in this time where it was being seen, you know, what, what had been happening. Um, and wow. So I say amen to that, because that's what all my dreams have shown, too, that the fear of the Lord is going to be gripping. And because there have been no consequences. I mean, that, that's what everyone exactly. has been crying out for after all these exposures. Well, where's the justice then? Yep. God's going to be the, the final judge. And, well, and, and that's what I'd like to say, too. I mean, that, that's a powerful dream you had. And that's exactly what I believe God's. That's where I think we're headed. I think we're headed to a time where God's God brings Trump. That's my belief. Mm -hmm. If it's Trump or he decides someone else, whoever else, I feel like God's saying justice is on the calendar. Yeah. And unless we see, see the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice. Mm -hmm. And until we start to see the measure of uh, that being measured out, mm -hmm. I don't believe we're going to see his throne, his dominion start to come forth. And we're going to see a, a generation. The, the church has become irrelevant because the throne of God has become so watered down. I mean, we don't, yeah. we don't see righteousness and justice. And that's what we have to start to see that being doled out, uh, administered out. And I think that is going to capture a generation. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, anyway, that's well, this is what else is coming while you're speaking, Andrew, is, you know, all these, uh, the prophecies about President Trump serving two terms. Mm. Have we thought about what realm that's supposed to take place in? Mm. If we only think the natural realm, the earth realm, we could misapply that. But I've mm -hmm. always known, I mean, when I, you know, teach about the difference between the sword and the scepter, I mean, there is a scepter of the righteous that will not be allotted to the wicked. Yep. There's no question that Donald J. Trump holds the scepter of mm -hmm. legitimate authority as a governing ruler over this nation. That has it has never departed from him. You yep. look at him right now, it doesn't matter what this realm says this administration is mm. in God's eyes. He, he has been serving his second term. Now mm -hmm. I'm not going to blast that out in defense of any prophecies I've had, but right. I believe it's a spiritual reality that when you're in tune, you know, with what God is going after, uh, you know, we can't be stuck on what we see in the natural and, uh, you know, again, how that, how the application works. I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm behind you in what you, you know, are standing for. Yeah. And, you know, when you have dreams like you and I do and, and other prophets do, and you know, you didn't come up with this idea and it's repeated enough, you know, it's, it's not us that are saying this. Yeah. Uh, all you can do is share. This is what the Lord has shown me. And, yeah. you know, it has been humbling for, for everyone in the prophetic community to acknowledge you know, we're not so good at this sometimes. No, <laughs> you know? right. I mean, we're we're vessels, but you have to continually humble yourself and say, "This is the I, I, I think I had a wrong application there, or I didn't quite interpret it right." But to me, I'm I'm taking it all as we are being fine tuned, we're being sanctified, we are going up to new levels of receiving revelation in a way that it, it's going to be pure, it's going to be powerful, um, and it's it's going to be meaningful you know, in, in that regard, because that's where our, that's where my vision always has to be is what is he doing in, in the kingdom of God? It's a spiritual realm because that has to be set in place first. And yes. then the natural, you know, will follow suit. So um, anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of unknowns, obviously, next year. And, you know, in terms of the, my question to you about 2024, Someone just asked me on uh, Truth Social, you know, what do you do you think we're even going to have elections? And I haven't gotten any prophetic intel about that. I, I guess some have. Mm -hmm. But my admonition has been, even if 
we don't think they could possibly happen. I think we need to plan and prepare as if they are. Otherwise, yeah. there's a large segment of the population that just won't do anything. Right. They just say, what's, the, you know, what's the use? Right. Well, God has something specific that we need to engage in, obviously prayer, yeah. but um, to me, it always goes back to the local level. This right. is, this is why I believe, uh, I mean, powerful word he gave to me a couple of weeks ago of houses of prayer. It's no mm. coincidence that what is happening in Kansas city with the house of prayer, there's a prophetic message there, regardless of what's really happening, what's coming out. God is speaking to the houses of prayer. Yeah. He's preparing that place for him to place his foot down, take a Absolutely. stand. Yep. Because we have to take our territories. I mean, this is what we're even seeing, uh, you know, legally, you know, regardless of what happens nationally. I mean, it, the abortion rights, it's going to come down to that. You can yeah. have a national edict, but then depending upon what your governor says. That's right it's going to be totally different. So this is where I see it's all heading. As we've all been focused on the national sphere, we have to look at our territories and what, what's being established there. If we're going to keep it, you know, if we're yes. going to keep the Republic, like right. Benjamin Franklin said, um, and again, that's a long-term goal, but uh, I don't know. Have any thoughts on that? Well, yeah, I think uh, 20, you know, in terms of, yeah, the elections and stuff. I, I don't have any revelation on that either. Um, my my gut is saying, <laughs> whether that matters or not, but my gut <laughs> is saying That's that, a good qualifier. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, that the patriot side of things and those who are in Trump's camp know that those who follow him know that these elections have been so corrupt that to me, there has to be some measure of intervention, whatever that means. And I'm not mm -hmm. prophesying that as mm -hmm. going to happen before 24, 24, but at some level, I feel like there's, there's going to be some interruption of some sort. Yeah. I kind of sense the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I'm, you know what I'm trying to remember? Let me see. I've, I think I wrote down a dream that I had very recently. I don't even think I've shared it yet. Uh, oh, cool. First time yeah. here. Yeah. So you get the first, the first look at this. Let me see. Okay. So in my dream, this was November 6th. In my dream, I don't even know what I'm about to say. So I'm just going to read what I wrote. In my dream, uh -huh. I was in a conference room where President Trump was. And I saw that his bodyguard needed to step out to take care of a certain matter. And I realized that Trump's side was not covered. So I ran to his side, being willing to protect him from anything that might come near him uh, from that direction. As I, stood, as I stood near him, he looked at me and smiled. We shook hands and I said, I'm Andrew Whalen. He responded and said, I know of you and I've heard great things, which that's cool. <laughs> and I don't know if that's true, but that'd be cool if it was. Um, anyway, and he says in the dream, he says, I know about you and Johnny in low and Elijah's dreams. You guys are all doing great things. Then he stood up to walk out of the room, but I walked with him. Or, but I walked with him. He looked at me and said, I used to think that God would just do everything. I This is Trump saying. He said, I used to think that God would just do everything. And then he said, I used to think that all that was needed was for a prophet to say it, and that was it, and God would do the rest. And Trump said, but now I know I wasn't right. God will do what only he can do, but we must do our part. At that moment, it was like I had an instant revelation of what he meant. And I knew that he felt the church is often so religious. They do not have any grid for the kingdom outside of the four walls of the church realm. And I had an instant knowing that when he said that we must do our part, in, in the dream, I knew that the military activities taking place across the earth 
was just as spiritual and kingdom as a pastor praying in a service hmm. because these are operations and actions of soldiers. Oh, let's see. Because these operations and actions of soldiers were ministers of God's kingdom justice. So I discerned that Trump was frustrated that the church could not recognize the way the kingdom of God was at work through his presidency and even through the behind the scenes military operations. And I said to myself in the dream, Trump is more of a prophet than most prophets. I continued to walk with him and the dream ended. So wow. that, that was the dream. <laughs> I find it really interesting. Um, you know, I don't know if this is answering or being in, in alignment with what you had asked me, but part of me feels like what we need to understand is that we have to do our part mm -hmm. just because a prophecy has come forth. I think the prophetic too often just settles on, okay, instead of, wait, this is the, we have to align with this. We yes. have to say, we have to add our amen in terms of let's, let's recognize that this is what God wants to do. Let's do everything we can now to put our hands to it, to, to bless it, to be a part of it. And I do think that is exactly what you said. We have to do our part in our own region. Mm -hmm. We have to pray. We have to do the, the, you know, we have to vote. We have to do the right kinds of things that aligns with what God's saying. And, um, and so there's more to that. And I don't know if you have any more thoughts, but. No, that it's it's awesome i mean i've i always saw trump as a prophet even before he got elected in 2016 it was clear the way he saw things the way he spoke uh, it was as a prophet would um and i think i've heard other dreams not just from you but even from others you know revealing his perspective mm -hmm. uh, and even his growth in understanding how the church is involved or not involved mm -hmm. um but that that is I mean, it's another illustration of this conflict of the church and government. Yep. Of can we see it all from God's eyes? Yes. Because His kingdom is a government, and there is rule, and there, and there is legislation that happens. Um, and do we recognize God's hand in all of it? And your point of agreement, uh, yeah. Because, I mean, Bob, Bobby will even say this because we were. We were questioned this at our prophetic conference that, that we hosted a couple of months ago. You know, this whole thing of, um, you know, prophets apologizing back in 2021, you know, for their failed prophecies. And, mm. and but Bobby's point was. We have to partner with what prophets say, and, and he's he basically said there was not agreement in the church, nope. you know, and God looks for agreement. And yep. so when there's. When there's not agreement and not partnering with a word, um, then yeah, it, it's not going to be fulfilled. That's which goes back to my my word I, I recently released it. It's our agreement that God is looking for. Our unity is so important, but our unity is is not compromised. That, right. That's what a, a certain segment, you know, the mercy hearted people <laughs> will lean towards. It, it's it's being willing. To hear the whole truth, I think I, I wrote the other day, the truth will set us free, but we have to be willing to face it. Wow. And there's some truth that people don't want to face. That's right. And this is what we're being confronted with. Can we yeah. handle the truth? Because mm. it will set us free. Yep. Um, it's not going to be comfortable. And I, our mind will be blown, I believe, when it when it's all revealed of how God's been working in the government, in the political sphere, in the military. Yes. Uh, because that's the only thing that's that's going to really settle some of these things. I do believe that there, there will come that time, like we said way back in 2020, when it's going to be seen. I don't know to what degree or what measure, but you know, God's God defends his word. I, we don't have to defend his, when it's his word, he will defend it. He will yep. back it up. Um, yep. And even in the interim, you know, he's testing us too and how we, we steward that waiting period. Mm. Can we trust him to defend himself? 
and just stand on what he said and and not, you know, fall back. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a, a powerful dream. Cause even when you said you ran to his side, to me, that's another call to prayer to guess what you were doing. Yep. Interesting. We stand by him in prayer. You yeah. know, it doesn't matter anymore. Cause there's, there's no way that everyone's going to agree on what's really happening behind the scenes. Right. You know, it's just like the rapture. We're never going to all yeah. agree on, <laughs> on eschatology. Yeah. And God does that on purpose because that's not the focus. We have to, we have to agree on what's really critical right now. Um, where is God moving and working, um, contending for the, for that breakthrough? We have, we have a voice. And actually I, I wanted to reference the scripture because I was pointing to first Corinthians, uh, the first chapter where Paul was talking about this oneness of heart and mind and even rebuking the church for dividing into so many camps. You know, you follow Paul, you follow Cephas, whatever. But then there's an, another scripture, uh, another verse, a few verses later that I'd never thought of in this context. He, he quotes from Isaiah that says, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning. I will thwart. Mm. That's in first Corinthians wow. 1 19. That caught my attention. The discernment of the discerning. I will thwart. And, you know, here, I mean, you and I were, you know, there, there's a call and a gift to interpret, to rightly discern, you know, what the spirit is saying and doing. Is there coming a time where even that the Lord is, is saying, you, you can only go so far because in the end, you know, this is Paul's appeal. It, it, it's the cross of Christ. I mean, we can't empty him of his power, his right to rule and to reign. He is the judge. He is the arbiter. Uh, there are certain things that doesn't matter how many whistleblowers you have or keyboard warriors or intelligence committees. God's the final right. call, you know, right. and that, and to me, that's pretty humbling. <laughs> it is, isn't it? Yeah. He will make us be dependent upon him ultimately. Yeah. And yeah. He- Wow. Well, do you have, do you have other thoughts here? You know, cause I know we've talked about a, a number of things and even with the, um, well, I did want to ask you this yet. Uh, do you have time? Good. On yeah. Time? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, cause one of the things that you have championed, uh, in intercession is the lion's roar. Yes. And I shared with you off, off camera about, you know, my own journey and how, the Lord made that very real to me earlier on this year when I was really hit by the enemy. And you had specifically said the lion's roar will, will it will overturn, it will break off witchcraft. Hmm. And we know that that's happening to some degree, but how do we, you know, in this whole realm of spiritual warfare and prayer, how do we, how do we move forward, you know, in looking at what we're dealing with and, and even in the church, the divisions that there are, how do we bridge build? Uh, how do we build bridges uh, and avoid even witchcraft within the church when we don't even realize that we're cursing each other, and it's just as damaging as curses spoken by witches? I mean, this is I'm, I don't want to put words in your mouth because this is some you know what what I've been you know walking through and being hesitant to even put out there, but that there is witchcraft in the church because our words are so powerful and we just don't understand it. Yes. Um, but this is worthy of some discussion because we have to be aware yep. of what we're saying, what we're hearing. I mean, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, it's very interesting. Um, yeah, I think the, um, I, as far as bridge building goes, um, I'm not sure I'm the greatest bridge builder. <laughs> I'm like ready to burn bridges. no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm running and burning that bridge or burn that bridge. No. Um, but no, I do think that's important. I do think that we have to, what's the scripture say? As much as it depends on us, be at peace with all men. You mm-hmm. know, we need to learn how to be at peace. Um, whether we agree or don't agree, let's um I, you know, from so the ministry I do vanquish and the vanquish academy. Um, I taught the people that were a part of the academy. Um, there was a, a Moravian. I'm not sure if the Moravians uh, came up with this phrase, but it was like a motto that they've used. And it's a a Latin phrase, which I I can't remember the actual Latin terminology. But when you break down what it means, it means uh, in essential things, unity, 
in non-essential things, liberty, and in all things, love. Mm. And I think that's what we have to get back to. And by the way, the Moravians were key. They they were some of the greatest missionaries back. I, I can't remember the dates, but back in the, whether it was the 1700s, 1800s, I can't remember now, but they would they had this multi-streamed community of people from different different backgrounds who disagreed a, on a lot doctrinally but they but they live by that motto that hey in the essential matters let's be unified you know on the uh on where Jesus is concerned and salvation and that kind of stuff let's be unified on the the lesser essential matters um let's we'll allow for liberty and in all things love yeah. And out of that community, some of the great awakenings in America took place. Uh, the Wesleys were deeply impacted. John and Charles Wesley were deeply impacted by the Moravians, and they carried that fire uh, into America, as well as the Moravians brought up a hundred year prayer movement night and day. It, it didn't stop for a hundred years. And um, anyway, all that to say is, I believe we have to learn or at least be willing to say, hey, where it concerns things we don't agree on or we don't see the same or we don't have the same perspectives, let's allow for some liberty yeah. mm -hmm. and maintain uh, maintain love. The scripture says love holds things together, binds things in perfect harmony mm -hmm. and so we have to be willing to say, you know what, I don't, that's not what God's shown me. I don't agree with that. Um, and at that point, I won't agree yet on the areas that we can agree. Let's agree. Let's align. Mm -hmm. And um, and I'm going to bless you. I'm going to learn the art of blessing mm -hmm. and bless as much as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I did have a dream recently. I think this is very interesting in the dream. I was, I was sitting down at a table and I looked and there were all these other people. I didn't know if they were witches or if they were Christians because the only, I honestly didn't know. I didn't know who they were. Um, but, but I did discern that, um, on oh, my computers, one second, got to plug in my computer Yeah. <laughs> and I might have to switch my camera. It might get a little more fuzzy, but one second here. Okay, sorry, my picture is not as good quality, but it'll save the power from my computer dying. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. So, um, so uh, this this dream where I saw all these people in in uh, at the table, and I didn't know if they were Christians or witches, but they were all accusing. Accusation, 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 negative speaking, negative speaking, negative speaking. And I saw that they had, uh, well, while I was sitting out at this table, it was, looked like it was in a valley, like this, like this grassy valley. And then I looked out and I saw all these other tables of people doing the same things. And in the dream, I thought, oh, these are tables of accusation. And um, in the dream, I began at the table I was sitting at the man who was leading this had turned the attention of everybody at the table onto me and were releasing accusation after accusation. But what I realized is that he was projecting things on me that he was actually guilty for. Um, and so then I began not to condemn him but I condemned his words. I said, I condemn these words. I condemn your accusations. I condemn them. And in the dream, suddenly I looked up and I saw Dutch Sheets. And Dutch Sheets was standing on top of a hill over this valley. And Dutch, I knew, was writing a book on the ecclesia. And in the dream, I walked up to Dutch and I said, Dutch, I have condemned their accusations. And I said, because the true, ec or I said, because the right of the ecclesia is to condemn every tongue that rises up against it. 
And in the dream, Dutch looks at me and says, okay, Andrew, you're going to finish writing my book on the Ecclesia. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I don't know if I, I sent that dream to Dutch. He goes, let me ponder it. Yeah. But, but the fact is, I really do believe God wants to teach us as the uh, Ecclesia to understand that when we start to bring um, accusation and word curses, we are actually entering into witchcraft. Mm-hmm. And and there are that that's the thing is it's almost like God was saying, I wondered in the dream why can't I discern if these are witches or Christians? Because God was saying because once you start to enter in and become a table of accusation, you become like a coven of witches. Yeah. That's what you start to function in. Mm-hmm. And as the ecclesia, we have to be those who are saying we will have no part of this and we'll condemn the accusing tongue. Even if it's coming out of my own mouth, I got to condemn that thing. I mm-hmm. cannot allow. Now, that doesn't mean we don't speak truth. It mm-hmm. doesn't mean that we, uh, y- you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, yeah. but I think we have so damaged as the body of Christ, other brothers and sisters other leaders and we've done it in the name of whatever religious you know because we're right or we're yeah. or we're holding up truth mm-hmm. but yeah. this i don't know does this make sense what i'm saying well oh yeah um i've been saying for a long time this issue of covenant is extremely important that we don't understand and before we started this interview, I had shared with you a dream that was sent to me and I'm not going to go into it, but one part of that dream was specifically referencing covenants that had been made because of words spoken and documents signed and it acted as a covenant and it opened the door to witchcraft. And I think this is a warning uh, we need to take seriously that it's not only the spoken things, but even on social media, when we write things and worse yet, even in churches, in the name of church discipline, we mean, we, we've got to be very, very careful mm-hmm. when we start creating documents and having people sign them. Mm-hmm. Because if that is not done with the fear of the Lord and the full counsel of God, yep. we are operating in witchcraft. Yep. I believe that that has happened far too often and we haven't even realized it. Now, you know, God will be the final judge in that because he knows the person's heart. Sometimes we do it in ignorance because we're not aware, but I, he's wanting to alert us to this because the enemy, that's how he plays. That's why they're called covens. Right. They know exactly what a covenant is. That agreement and you sign it, then it's done. It's sealed. You have you have given over your will to something. And the enemy will always take advantage of it. He will exaggerate it and he will manipulate it and twist it. Even if you think I'm doing a good thing. Um, so I, I hear that with the fear of the Lord on it. Uh, and, and I say, amen, we need to be making right covenants, you know, and this is this to me, it goes back to the fellowship, the bond uh, of believers of why we need to be a part of local fellowships. I mean, the devil has done such a good job of convincing us we can't trust anybody in leadership. I'm not going to join any church. I'm not, you know, yep. now that's exactly what he wants us to do because then we're, we're totally disconnected. Yep. You know, we're, we're not in that. There's a spiritual reality to that, um, that I'm praying. Uh, yeah, we have a, a fresh revelation of the power of covenant together, what that looks like, what that does in the spirit, even joining a church. Yes. We, we have membership at our church. But it's because of these spiritual dynamics. It's not because we we're looking for your name to be written down or we want you on the rolls. There's a spiritual dynamic uh, yeah. at work. So maybe it's going to take seeing the the negative side to wake us up to you know God has a real thing that's actually very powerful. So yes, well I do. It's interesting you're talking about covenant because I that that, that theme of covenant is super on my heart right now. Like mm. like it's I actually just had a uh a woman over this morning she was visiting uh, my wife and i uh she's a a real apostolic teacher here in the state of illinois and our whole conversation this morning was on covenant um and i and we were talking about the witches how they understand covenant Mm. and how the body of christ 
often does not. <laughs> yeah. Um, and how we do sometimes, we, we both don't recognize where we have made covenant in terms of what we say and what we're joining to. Mm -hmm. And then we also don't recognize the power of when we come into right covenantal alignment. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I think everything you're saying, absolutely. Yeah. And you know, one, one scripture that the, the Lord had brought to mind earlier this year when I was dealing with witchcraft that was coming against me and the Lord was showing me specifically where it was coming from. You remind me of a, the passage, you know, when the prophet Samuel was confronting Saul about not doing things God's way. And he said, rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, which mm. I've quoted many times, you know, hoping to alert people. You realize that when you're in rebellion, that's as witchcraft. But there's a second part to that verse. And he says, and presumption is as the sin of idolatry. Wow. And the Lord really convicted me about that. Presumption is as the sin of idolatry. This, this is, it, it could even be prophetic presumption. It could be personal presumption. We begin to presume that we know what mm. God said or what God wants. It, it, idolatry, yeah, we've been walking in that <laughs> in, in different ways. To me, again, that was a wake-up call uh, in the fear of the Lord of what are we agreeing with? What are we aligning with? Uh, do we have all our filters clear um, that it's not about validating self, feeding self, feeling comfortable? We are fully surrendered. Uh, and even acknowledging those things. I don't know. I don't know what God's saying. I don't know what God's doing. And I'm not going to try to fill in the gaps. Yep. You know. Um, so, wow. That's excellent. Oh, no, that's right on. I, yeah. there, well, I think it's important. I think that uh, my great hope too is this, is that when things do, um, I think this year, I think this year is going to be a lot of warfare, um, but it's unto some great, great things. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the breakthroughs that we've been believing, contending for, prophesying, believing for, I think they're coming. Yes, I do. And, so. with, and I'm hoping that they're happening in 2024. That, that's, <laughs> I'm not going to presume at this point, but I, <laughs> yeah, I, but uh, I'm hoping. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, yeah. And I think that I think that when some of these breakthroughs take place, some of these major national level things start to break through. I think it's going to wipe the slate clean in a lot of ways. I think mm -hmm. where there's been the disconnect, where where we, where the body has been disjointed, I think in a lot of ways, by virtue of what happens across the board, it's going to bring almost like an alignment. Not to say yeah. it's going to be easy, but right. I do believe yes. that so much that's disjointed is going to suddenly come into into an alignment. Yes, and it's going to clear up a lot of the present, just where we've been yes and so i my great contending is for these sweeping major drastic uh breakthroughs to take place because i think we are desperately in need of it not just as a not just as a republic and, an, and a nation but as the body of christ yes and mm -hmm. and in the prophetic we need god you know um we may not see some of the full unity and um alignment that we we hope for unless some of these major breakthroughs start to to come forth and so yeah that, that's what i'm believing and praying into well i agree with you and i mean as you said that that that's our declaration you know yes. we don't always have to say dear jesus and pray because that's the power of our words amen what, what you said and i am in full agreement uh with that we have a lot of to contend for. So I, I think we've got a busy year ahead of us, Andrew. <laughs> yes. um, but I, I'm believing as you are, it's, it's going to be amazing uh, to see God do what, what only he can do. So um, I really didn't have you even formally introduce yourself, but where can, where can people get a hold of you? You mentioned your Vanquish Academy. Um, tell us about that or what else you're involved in. 
Yeah, so right now, um, people can find me if you want to uh, find me online on Facebook. I have a free group called Vanquished Prophetic Warriors. And so people can join that for free. It's a private group, so you just have to answer a few questions when when you come to join. Um, but but then you're let in. There's about 7,000 people or so in, in the group, which That's is pretty awesome. cool. Yeah. Man, it's I think cool. I joined when it was just a couple hundred. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you were... You were early on and uh so it's been great to grow the group and we're hoping to eventually have it where we have um kind of more of a membership to help really equip and and further train so we'll be we'll be sharing more about that and then um if you want to look up any current resources i have right now there's a few things i have at my website which is vanquishpw.com Okay. So VanquishPW.com. All right. We'll have that on the screen as well. And we're planning something, hopefully, here next yes. year early. We're going to go off camera and, and settle that date. So everyone can be looking forward to that too. Um, collaboration. I believe there's going to be a lot more collaboration in, in the days ahead in a very good way. Where the enemy has tried to divide, God's going to give us strategies to connect. Uh, um, and we're really going to celebrate. That's what I'm praying for. We're going to celebrate our diversity, even as prophets, um, those who have been speaking and praying, uh, we're, we're going to come together on that. So this has yeah. been awesome. Thank you, Andrew. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much, Wanda. I appreciate you having me on and love it. Yeah. Amen.